America condemns the hero's welcome shown to the Lockerbie bomber in Libya. Abdel Basset al Megrahi returned home to crowds and Scottish flags after being released by Scotland's government on compassionate grounds. The images that we saw uh, <clears throat> in Libya yesterday were outrageous and disgusting. We'll be assessing what this reaction means for devolved Scotland. Also tonight, still counting the votes in Afghanistan's presidential elections, but already two candidates are claiming a clear lead. Two more soldiers die in Helmand province as the bodies of the four killed at the weekend are flown home. Stock markets rally as the Federal Reserve says America's on the brink of recovery. Late swing, Adam thinking going down the And side. Australia's batsmen are demolished as England take control of the deciding test for the Ashes. In BBC London news, marches banned in Luton to stop a repeat of clashes between extremists and two men appear in court charged with Britain's biggest ever jewellery robbery. Hello, good evening. America has called the celebration surrounding the return home of the Lockerbie bomber outrageous and disgusting. Abdel Basset al Megrahi returned to Tripoli last night to a hero's welcome. He was released on compassionate grounds after a decision by the Scottish government. Today it emerged that both Gordon Brown and Barack Obama had appealed to Colonel Gaddafi to give the convicted man a low key reception. From Tripoli, Christian Fraser reports. The arrival of a national hero. Certainly that's how Libya wanted it portrayed. But how much damage has this celebration for al Megrahi's return done to their improving relations with the outside world? On state television, Colonel Gaddafi's son, Saif al-Islam, welcomed him home like a decorated soldier as Scottish flags were waved in jubilation. Today, the government minders kept us away from al Megrahi's family, but we did manage to speak to his brother-in-law. Thank God Abdel Basid is home, he said. However, you know we are saddened by the tragedy of Lockerbie and the people that lost their children. But I assure you, Abdel Basid is innocent. If you could see him now with his mother, you'd realize it is impossible he could do it. That's not how the British government see it. They warn the Libyans. Within an hour of the plane taking off, the British ambassador, Sir Vincent Fearn, arrived at the Prime Minister's residence carrying a letter from Downing Street. In it, Gordon Brown asked for the Libyans to act with sensitivity. The British government, he said, expects a low-key return. Clearly, the message was confused or perhaps ignored. State media later reported that the letter concerned only bilateral relations. But now it seems that message is heard loud and clear. So far, there's been no reaction from Colonel Gaddafi, no televised meeting with the convicted bomber, no triumphalism at all. Behind me, you see the lights for a celebration in 11 days' time that will mark the 40th anniversary of the coup that brought Colonel Gaddafi to power. The Libyan leader does not want this angry storm of condemnation overshadowing his big event. Outrage from grieving Americans at the hero's welcome. In the United States, the pictures carried on the East Coast morning shows only stoked the anger. What about the hero's welcome in Libya, sir? You consider Libya a terrorist state, sir? I think it was a highly objectionable. I think the images that we saw uh, <clears throat> in Libya yesterday were outrageous and disgusting. Um, we uh, continue to express our condolences to the families that lost a loved one um, as a result of this terrorist murder. But how much are the British and American governments prepared to push this? In the not so distant future, Libya will be one of the top 10 oil producers in the world, and already it's transforming the country. British energy companies have already invested heavily, and some believe future deals were at risk unless Al Megrahi had been released. But in truth, Libya and the UK, while the uneasiest of bedfellows, need each other. The UK seeks the energy supplies and exciting new business opportunities. In turn, the Libyans need the investment and the expertise. The big celebrations at the end of this month are billed as the new dawn. But the world is now watching whether Libya has really turned the page. Christian Fraser, BBC News, Tripoli. 
Today, Scotland's First Minister, Alex Salmond, condemned the celebrations in Tripoli, but insisted that releasing McGrath had been the right thing to do. The decision by the Scottish Justice Secretary, Kenny McGaskill, has sparked a major political row in Scotland and is being seen as a test for the devolved government, as Lorna Gordon reports from Edinburgh. Salt is flying in Tripoli, welcoming Abdul Basit al Megrahi home. His future was decided by a devolved Scottish government. They've described the celebrations as inappropriate, but are standing by their decision to release him. What Kenny McCaskill did was, I believe, the right decision, but above all, it was done for the, the right reasons, which established that compassion is part of our judicial system. We didn't do it to court popularity. We didn't do it because we're under pressure. Kenny McCaskill took his decision I think the right decision, but certainly for the right reasons. But other Scottish politicians are furious at the decision to let the man convicted of the murder of 270 people to go free. My view uh, is that the decision to send Mr Al McGrathy home was the wrong one, and if I'd been First Minister, he wouldn't have gone home to Libya yesterday. The headlines in today's Scottish newspapers reflect the strong feelings surrounding the decision to set McGrathy free. I think I'm being released was fine because he's ill, but I was disappointed that they celebrated it when they got back. He's getting home to his family, and the people that were killed didn't get home to their family. I don't agree with it. When you see the salt air getting fly, uh, flown, well, it's just totally wrong. You know, that, this does Scotland no good at all. Over the last nine years, Scottish ministers have considered 31 applications from prisoners seeking compassionate release from jail. Seven were refused. They failed to meet the criteria. So what are the guidelines? A prisoner could be freed if they're suffering from a terminal illness and death is imminent, if they're severely incapacitated, or if continued imprisonment would endanger or shorten their life. McGrahi's release has soured relations between the UK and Scottish governments. The Scottish Justice Secretary will be quizzed here in Parliament on his decision next week. This has been a defining moment for the SNP administration and a big test for the devolved government on the global stage. This is a reflection uh, in the last two or three days of the fact that this is no place for novices, that these are difficult areas. You, you need experience and you need judgment. And I'm afraid to say the SNP administration has demonstrated neither of these. Scotland's government argued they shouldn't be judged by Libya's reaction to Megrahi's return and the hero's welcome given in Tripoli to a convicted man. Lorna Gordon, BBC News, Edinburgh. And let's go live now to Washington. Our correspondent, Adam Brooks, at the White House says it's keeping a close eye on developments in Libya. Despite the strong words, will it actually do anything? Well, Emily, that very question was put to the White House today by journalists, and the presidential spokesman, when asked, if you're so angry, what are you going to do about it, was very non-committal. They just said they were going to watch developments in Libya in the next few days. So I'd anticipate that as long as the Libyans don't do anything too provocative, the Americans probably won't move much beyond issuing angry statements. One thing, though, I'm told today that Colonel Gaddafi badly wants to meet President Barack Obama. And I'm told that the Libyans have put in a request for just such a meeting to take place on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly in New York next month. Well, I'd imagine that the chances of such a meeting taking place are fading fast. Adam Brooks in Washington. Thank you.